Hey, what's up guys? John with Russell Marine Products and today we're going to be addressing another frequently asked hummingbird question. What are the differences between the Helix, the Solix, and the Apex? Stay tuned. All right, you guys, we do get this question quite often. If you're looking at adding a Humminbird unit to your boat for whatever reason, whether it's 360, Mega Live, side imaging, maybe you just want it for Lake Master, we've, we've got several different reasons why you may go with one option over the other. Uh, I'm gonna be a little bit more familiar with the Helix units, but more recently, I've been running more of the Solix and the Apex line of units as well. So they've all got their time and place and we're going to go over all of the different benefits and features uh, of each one, at least all of the features that kind of stand out over each other. So first I want to start out with the Helix unit. This is going to be their more budget friendly option. I have a 12 inch unit right here and as it pertains to screen resolution, you're going to get the same screen resolution out of a Helix 12 that you will out of a Solix 12. If you go any lower than the 12 inch Helix, you do go down in screen resolution. So for this video, if you're looking at 12 inch units and you go Helix versus Solix, you're gonna get the same screen resolution. But that being said, the Solix guys do tend to get a little bit better images. And I don't know if that has something to do with the material of the screen or, or what it is, but the actual amount of pixels on the screen are the same whether you look at Helix versus Solix. So that is something to take into consideration. If you're looking at uh, side imaging or down imaging, you're, you're using this for sonar, you're really not gonna get a better image uh, when you go to the Solix, at least when you look at it on paper. I think some of you Solix guys are gonna show up in the comments and prove me wrong. I've seen lots of really good screenshots from the Solix, so there's something to that, but as far as the specs go, you're getting the same amount of pixels on the screen. The Helix does have a much more attractive price range, so you're typically gonna save about $500 going with the Helix versus the same size uh, Solix unit. So, you know, if you look at the 12 versus the 12, there's about a $500 savings there on the Helix side. You know, one thing that you will notice right away is that the Helix is a non-touch. You've got all these keyed buttons over here and that is how you will operate the unit. That's how you will navigate the interface. So that can be a little bit tough for people to learn that are new to Humminbird. I've been using the Helix units since before they were even called the Helix units. Uh, you know, the core series had pretty much the same exact interface. So if you're a long time Humminbird guy coming from those core units, maybe you're running older Helix units, that Helix unit will be an easy transition. So this is the interface that we were talking about. In order to go through all the settings, you got to go through this main tab and then you can drop down and make your transducer selections. You can go in here, mess with your charts, your GPS, your networking. This is where all of that stuff is accessed. Easy enough, but not really how these other units are laid out. Going over to the Solix and the Apex, those have you know touch screens and their interface is a little bit different. So going from a Helix to a Solix, there's a little bit of learning there as well. Um, I would say for a new user, if you're looking at being brand new to Humminbird altogether, never ran a Humminbird a day in your life, the Solix and the Apex is probably going to be a little bit more intuitive. You're going to be able to learn this operating system a little bit easier. Um, just, you know, hear some complaints from new Humminbird guys. Once they get the, the Helix interface down, no problem, but it does take some getting used to. Okay, so this user interface is very easy to navigate. 
you want to adjust your settings, you go here. You have all of your quick options here, charts, 2D, down imaging. You just select what you want. You also have some more quick options here for your Mega Live or Mega 360. But if you need to make adjustments, go in, check out your network. Just kind of a basic, here's where your settings are at. You know, the thing about the Helix, you know, obviously that price range is attractive. Some guys prefer the non-touch, but you're also getting all of the same, most of the same benefits that you'll get out of the Solix and the Apex. So if you're looking at 2D, down, side imaging, Mega 360, Mega Live, you know, you're going to be able to do all of that stuff with the Helix. So you're not really gaining anything as it pertains to those things I just mentioned. There are some networking benefits that you'll get out of the Solix in the Apex. Uh, something you want to keep in mind, it's not going to be a, a huge cost, but there is going to be some cost uh, down the road when you go to adding a map card. So the Helix does not have the ability to share a map card through the network where the Solix in the Apex does. Those map cards are going to run you right around $200. So depending on how many units you have on the boat, if you've got all helixes and you want to be able to run mapping on all of them, you're looking at a couple hundred dollars a pop. Whereas if you've got Solix and Apex units, they will share a map card, not only Solix with Solix or Apex with Apex, but the Apex and the Solix will share uh, through, through the network with each other as well. Um, so that is, that is something that the Solix and the Apex line of units have you know, a little bit leg, leg up on the Helix. Um, one cool thing, I brought this out, this is a cable tray. So this is an easy way to connect your power, your transducer, your GPS sensors, um, ethernet. They will all actually fit into this tray here. And then you can actually snap this into the back of your unit real quickly. And to pull it out, you know, power the unit off and you can pull the cable tray out and you can pull all of your connectors out in one shot. So that is pretty handy and uh, something that you don't have on the Solix or the Apex. So that is definitely an advantage as it, as it pertains to the Helix. Um, so that's kind of a cool feature there. Now, we've kind of gone over the main selling points of the Helix. You know, you've got price, you've got the simplicity of the unit, You've got all of the same sonar features that you'll have on the Solix, and then you've also got that cable tray. So those are kind of the main selling points there. If we want to start looking at the Solix unit, one of the first things we'll, we'll talk about is the touchscreen. Um, so just having that touchscreen does make it a lot easier to navigate through the menus. A lot of those options and features are going to be in some of the same places that you're going to find on your Lowrance and your Garmin units. So this interface, whether we're talking Solix or Apex, is going to be much more familiar to you if you're coming from another brand. So that is definitely going to be a plus when it comes to these two. Um, GPS, this is one that we went over in a recent video and we went over how to source heading and the GPS antenna out of the AS GPS HS antenna. So that antenna serves two purposes. With the Solix and the Apex, you can actually pull those features from the puck individually. You don't have to use the puck for, for both heading and GPS. Okay, so here we're gonna show you how to go and select your GPS source or your heading source. So you can select the internal GPS to mark waypoints off of, and then you can go back here and you can select your heading sensor for heading. That way you are always pointed north. With the Helix, you don't have that option. So if you have one puck, you're not necessarily gonna be able to use that between both ends of the boat. Whereas if you've got Apex and Solix, you could actually pull heading from the antenna, if it's mounted on the back, up to your front unit and still continue to mark waypoints from the internal GPS inside of the unit. So if you're interested in, in learning exactly how to do that, make sure you check out the video that we did on that. Uh, but that is something that you don't have 
with the Helix. So could save you another couple hundred bucks down the line if you have to buy another antenna. So, you know, those little things can add up a couple hundred dollars here and there may just push you towards going with a Solix or an Apex. Um, so the interface is going to be a little bit more intuitive on both of these options. A uh, couple more options on GPS. Um, and that interface in that touch screen is also going to make storing and running your waypoints a little bit easier as well. So on the Helix, there's a lot more button pushing that's going to go on when you're marking waypoints, you're setting your icons up, you're naming those waypoints. You actually have to scroll through the menu and select one, uh, one letter at a time. So that can be a little bit tedious. So the Helix may not be the best dedicated mapping unit if you want to be able to edit those waypoints. You know, if you're coming from Lowrance, you know, that has a really uh, user-friendly interface. And I would say that matches more of the Solix and the Apex side. So if, you, if you're coming from Lowrance, uh, you might look more towards the Solix and the Apex. So something to look at there. Okay, so I'm marking a waypoint. I'm selecting an icon. There's a fish. Maybe I have a color that I want to use. And there we go. So that's how easy it is to mark a waypoint and edit it right here on the screen. If I want to rename that waypoint, boom, easy deal. We'll just name it waypoint. Save it. Now, we haven't really talked much about the Apex, but the Apex is going to be geared more towards offshore saltwater anglers. This is going to be comparable to like the Garmin 8600 series units. Uh, you do get the higher screen resolution. You get the 1920 by 1080 pixel count. Um, when we're talking the Solux and the Helix 12, those both are going to give you the 1280 by 800 pixel count. So a pretty big jump up when you go to the Apex. Again, uh, it's going to be comparable to that 8600 series. So guys that are just wanting this for maybe Mega 360 or Mega Live, uh, you see a lot of guys going with the Apex for the better screen resolution, going to get a clearer image. And uh, that is something that I would highly recommend if you're looking for a dedicated uh, Mega Live unit and you don't mind spending a little bit of money, definitely check out that Apex. I've been running the Mega Live on it, very happy with the, the images that I'm getting out of that. Uh, another big thing, and this kind of has to do with it coming from the saltwater family as well, is it has a faster processor. It is going to be much more responsive, you know, as you're navigating through screens, when you power the unit up, you know, this, this unit is going to power up very quickly. It's very responsive. And that is something that you will notice between the Solix and the Apex. So they did upgrade the processor in the Solix G3 lineup of units, but even if you put a G3 next to an Apex, you will notice this one is much faster. Another benefit that comes from this being a saltwater graph is the two kilowatt sonar port. So if you're fishing really deep water out in the ocean, this unit will take a transducer that will do that. If you're looking at fishing and four or 500 feet of water, something like that, you, you definitely want to look at going with that uh, higher powered transducer. And this unit will accept that. These two will not. Okay, so here we've got an ethernet port. This is our second ethernet port. You're not gonna see that on the other units. Uh, this is our normal sonar port here. And this is our two kilowatt transducer port for those deeper water offshore situations. And as you can see, we have HDMI in and HDMI out as well. Now, the other thing, and this probably stems from it being an offshore unit as well, is you get an extra Ethernet port. So if you've got all Apex units on your boat, you may not even need to add a five port switch, which is typically how we network all these units together. So since this unit has two Ethernet ports, it could accept a Mega Live, and then you could run an Ethernet port to another unit, and you could just keep daisy chaining those units together until you ran out of units or you ran out of ports. So uh, depending on what kind of networking accessories you have on the boat, you may be able to get away with not adding a five port switch. 
uh, if you're running all Apex units. And those five port switches are gonna run you somewhere around $250, $300. I don't remember right off the top of my head, but again, those little things add up here and there. Um, there is a pretty good price jump in between the Apex and the Solix, but again, I would equate that price difference to when you're looking at the Garmin's like an Echo Map versus the 8600 series GPS map units. Um, so you're, you're definitely getting what you're paying for there with the higher screen resolution, the faster processor, the extra ethernet port, and uh, even the two kilowatt sonar port. So bunch of features here. Some of them you may or may not use, but you will definitely benefit from that higher screen resolution and that faster processor. Um, so that is something to consider if you're looking at maybe going between the Solix and the Apex. I just want to circle back around on the tried and true Helix. This has been a fan favorite for years. There are guys that are still fishing the Elite Series that are running Helix units. They are, they are definitely tried and true. They're very reliable units and they do pretty much everything these other units will do. So if you're on a budget, definitely look at the Helix and uh, you know maybe later on down the line, you can work your way up to a Solix or an Apex. But if you want the best of the best, you wanna get the best picture possible and you wanna have that fast processor and that extra ethernet port, definitely check out the Apex. The Solix is gonna be kind of right in the middle of those two. It's gonna have that easy interface. It's gonna do everything that you wanna do. It's gonna give you some really good returns as well. And uh, also gonna be a little bit more easy to edit those waypoints than it will be on that Helix unit. So if you're a touchscreen guy and you wanna save a little bit of money, definitely check out that Solix. So at the end of the day, these units are all gonna do pretty much the same thing, but I wanted to go over some of the main benefits, some of the main standout features that will help you to decide which unit to put on your boat. But if you guys have any questions, make sure you put them down in the comment section below, or you can always give us a call at 316-313-4113, or shoot an email over to sales at russellmarineproducts.com. I wanna thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next one. Are you tired of your old marine electronics? At RP, we make trade in easy. Three steps. Step one, shoot us an email, get a quote. Step two, send us your old unit and get credit. Step three, get your brand new unit and get it installed on your boat today.